There's many people in this cr crowd that will claim that they are Christians. How does one know that they are saved? Well, God made it as easy as one, two, three, four. First John chapter two, verses three and four say, and hereby we do know that we know Jesus. If we keep his commandments, Sorry. he that says, I know Jesus, but does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Many people think they're right with God while they live in constant, habitual practicing of sin. But the Bible says the soul that sins shall die. The wages of sin are still death. I am loving my neighbor by telling them the truth. I would have to hate my neighbor to let them go to hell. I do not want to. Sir, why are you harassing me, sir? Why are you harassing me, sir? You're harassing me, sir. You're in the wrong place. I just want to preach the gospel. You're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong place, sir. You should go home and repent. That's why I want you to do. I want you to go home and repent of your sins. Because if you die in sin, you will go to hell. God is not a respecter of person. He doesn't accept you just the way you are. If Jesus accepted you just how you were, he never would have died on the cross to change you. The Bible says that you must repent of all sin. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, Jesus says, Not all who say to me, Lord, will enter into the kingdom. Only those who do the will of my Father, who is in that kingdom already. Many will say in the last days, Lord, Lord, have we not cast out demons for you and done mighty works and miracles in your name? And Jesus will say to them, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness, you who live in sin. I do not know you. And in the gospel, according to Luke, he says, I don't even know where you're from. Jesus Christ is not at all accepting. Love you just as you are. Mamsy, pamsy, tickle your ear. Jelly Bean, Burger King, have it your way. Barbie girl, be who you want to be, gospel preacher. Just like this. He is a righteous, yes, he did. holy preacher of hellfire and damnation. Jesus we don't have literal stones. About the love of God one time for the whole world. Once. Everywhere else. He talked about hell, repentance, damnation, eternal, everlasting torment for those who do not obey God. You must repent of sin today, my friends. We care about you. We are loving our neighbor. You are our neighbors and we love you. We do not want you to go to hell. I do not take pleasure in the idea of a single one of you burning for eternity and hellfire and damnation. It's grieving. It breaks my heart to know that you're on your way to hell and no amount of little clapping hands is going to stop it. Thank you. Praise God. It's all about the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, God is good. God is great. Hallelujah for those who obey him and don't live in practicing of sin. The Bible says, he who sins is a slave to sin. And a slave will not abide in the house forever, nope. but a son will abide in the house forever. Therefore, he who the son sets free shall be free indeed. Yep. Not free to do whatever you want, but to be free from sin. See, when your body, when your genitalia says sex, pleasure, you obey it. That's your master. 
But to be a Christian is to deny your body, to deny your genitalia, to deny your flesh, to overcome, to overcome temptation daily, to run the race, to endure. That is what being a Christian is. Pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. My friends, I beseech you today, turn from your sins, repent or perish. We do not want you to go to hell. Jesus says in Luke chapter 13 at verse three, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he repeats in Luke chapter 13 verse five, Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. The word repent in Greek is metanoia. It means to change your mind. Whereas I was a liar, I repented, so I tell the truth. I was a thief, I repented. I give back what I stole and live content. If you are a homosexual and you repent, you turn from it and give it back to God and live righteous and pure and live sexually pure, not sexually immoral. The Bible says that sexual sin is what is done inside of your body. All other sins are done outside the body. If you tell a lie, it's done outside of your body. If you steal, it's done outside of your body. But if you have sex with someone, it is done inside of your body. And this is why it's so easy to be led astray from God by following your sexuality. You must deny yourself, crucify your flesh. You must endure, beat your body into submission, my friends. Not submission to the temptation, but submission to Christ and overcoming temptation. I tell you, my friends, please do not follow these fake Christians that say everybody goes to heaven no matter what. You do not have to be a Hitler to go to hell. All it takes is one sin, just one, and it will lead to everlasting torment. You must repent of your sins today while you still have time. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of mercy. Today is the day of forgiveness. But tomorrow could be your judgment day. And do not be deceived, my friends. There is coming a day where you will stand before a righteous God and you will give an account for every thought, every word, and every deed done in this body. No, you should shut up and listen to the gospel that can save your soul. The Bible says the dogs will be outside the kingdom. Don't be like your dog, my friend. Yes, sir, they'll be outside the kingdom. You don't want to be outside of the kingdom of God. You want to be inside the kingdom of God. You want to be born again. You want to be saved from your sin. Being a Christian is not sinning freely. It's being free from sin. Please turn from your sins today. There is nothing in the gospel that condemns homosexuality. Yeah, there is. Okay. It's all over the place. No. Have you read Romans 1? Yeah. What are you doing about poverty? I'm not here for poverty today. Oh, I deal God, with that on God other times. God, God led me out God here today to talk. over 6,000 times. Why does he hate poverty. my dog? Why do you hate my dog? Why does he have to stand Why are you so rude? Heaven? I'm having a conversation. I don't give a f You're about being very rude, sir. Why does my dog not make it in I don't heaven? want to talk to you. Yeah, why does my dog not I don't want to talk to you? You want to talk to everybody without their consent but me. Why does that my filthy, dog make disgusting it potty mouth you got right there? That's disgusting. why I don't want to talk to you. You want to have a respectful conversation? I'll talk. Potty. You have a disgusting, filthy mouth. You blaspheme my savior. Why would I want to talk your to you? Your savior is a disgusting See? being. And your dog won't be in heaven. My Get dog over it. Doesn't make it in Get heaven. over it. Nope. But why nope. the dog? Because he why has no dog? soul. He has no soul. Why the dog? He has no soul. You have no soul. Yes, I do. You have no. I'm in. Soul. I have a soul. You come together I have and life. Shame people. Uh, My dog is a you should be ashamed you. if you're a homosexual. My you dog should be has ashamed. More value than you do. So you'd save your dog over a human? Absolutely, you. And that's your problem. Oh, it's a Jesus problem. Jesus didn't die for your dog. He died for you. 
He died to save you from your sins, sir. I come here every year to remind myself of why Christianity is full of hatred and I don't Jesus accept loves it. you. You're a Jesus hater. loves you. Jesus doesn't accept you, you either. You make people disgusted by Christianity and that's why you're You make Jesus disgusted. Jesus says he'll vomit you out of his mouth. Because you're all Read Revelation. He will vomit you out of his you're mouth. Obsolete. You're disgusting in the eyes of God. You have to repent, sir. You have to turn from your sin. You can still be saved. You're not too far gone. But But you don't have to go. You don't have to go to hell. Your dog your dog can't go to hell either. Let her go to heaven. Your dog will die the atheist death. Your dog will have the atheist death. My dog's an atheist? It will have the atheist death. My dog is an atheist. She doesn't know what God is. Sir, you're a mocker. You have a filthy mouth. Don't mess You have a filthy mouth. You're despicable in the eyes of God. My dog not make it into heaven. Do you want me to answer your question? Yes. Will you will you silence and listen? Will you not make it into heaven? So you don't want to know the answer. Why does my dog? So you don't want the answer. You ask a question, I try to answer, and you just keep yapping and yapping. My puppy deserves to go to heaven. Just please let it go to heaven. Your dog cannot go to heaven. The Bible says that humans are appointed to die and to be judged. Animals don't go to heaven. I'm a Boy Scout God and Country. Oh God. Big military family. I know a lot about the Bible. Isaiah, God is love, not fear. Rather, perfect love casts out fear. Ezekiel. Fear has to do with well, what about Ecclesiastes that says to, this is the conclusion of the whole matter? Fear God and keep his commandments. This is man's all. Faith, your shield, sword, the word of God. Yeah, but homosexuality is, is denying God. I set before you the blessings and the curses. I urge you to choose life. Yeah, choose life, not death. Homosexuality leads to death. If everyone was a homosexual, actually, there'd be no more life. Actually, Freemasonry is death. It's the, well, I'm the against Egyptian, them too. I'm Egyptian, against them too, yeah. the Egyptian book of the living and the dead. Um, well, you, you have to understand though, is that the soul that sins will die. Just because Jesus died on the cross to save you from sin doesn't mean that you get to sin freely. If you continue sinning, you will still die and go to hell. That's a promise from God. It's a instant salvation 2,000 years ago. No, but not everyone's saved. Who goes to hell? Think about this. What is it? Um, if you do not know love, you do not know God, and God is not in you. But what is love, though? But if you know love, God sends his Holy Spirit to reside in you. Exactly, him. exactly. But what is and love? God is love, not fear. No, but what is love, my friend? You, you can't just say love and then not define it. What is the definition of love? Perfect love. What is that? What is perfect love? Perfect love. Is it accepting everyone just the way they are? Exactly. Okay, so you accept pedophiles then. You have perfect love for them. It's it's about, what do you call it? Love doesn't harm. A pedophile You're right. Homosexuality harms too. It leads you to hell. It, it leads you to hell. The Bible says it all over the place. So God designed a man and a woman to be together. He didn't. Have you ever played MMORPGs? Sure, I have in the past. Yeah, I, magic they is, is... Mages, they have necromancers. Yeah, they that's have disgusting. Ice mages, that's they wicked. Have fire mages. I get it. They, what, what's your point? Holy Spirit mages. No, no. Yes. You can't summon the that's Holy Spirit works. like that. That's not I how it works. You, you know, don't get to manifest and summon the Holy you know Spirit. About gangs. You know about criminal gangs. I do. Gangster disciple. Sir, you... It's you, a Jewish star with sir, pitchforks. Sir, listen. Those are, those are gangster disciple. Those are the followers of Lord King Satan. Yeah, I know, I know an ex-gangster's mages. disciple. Those are mages. I, I, those are Satan's mages. You're right, and they're evil, just like the homosexual community. The LGBTQIA+. See, I'm, a plus. I'm, a holy, I'm a Holy Spirit soldier. So you think you have the Holy Spirit? Soldier do you support the sin I out here? I met him in a church. I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that. But listen, do you do you think that God accepts everything out here? Just accepts it? Not, not, not everything. They say, we're on earth. So? This is the heavenly kingdom. Sure. As he made earth. But, but he doesn't accept everyone just service. the way they are, my friend. You have service. to change. It's a it's a but the, Bi- the Bible says that you service. have to deny yourself. So if a person has homosexual tendencies, they have to deny themselves and not act on it. Yes. Not support it. The Bible says that if you support sinners in their sin, you are just as guilty as them. So if you, my friend, I'm not accusing you, but if you're out here supporting homosexuality, you are you're, you yourself are a sinner and you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. That's not true. I do have the Holy Spirit. N- not if you're living in sin. Is it, Think about it like this. I okay. defeated gangster disciples well, in prison because that, That's fine, but hear me out. You have a house you live at, right? An apartment, somewhere you stay. You wash your dishes. You take out your trash. You wash your laundry. Imagine you stopped doing that for two months. Your house would stink, wouldn't it? Would you want to stay living in it the way it is, or would you clean it all up and tidy it? The Holy Spirit is not going to live inside of a filthy, disgusting temple full of sodomy, homosexuality, disgusting stuff. You have to cleanse the temple of all of that, get rid of all of it, and live holy and pure for that spirit to dwell in you. Don't worry about them. There's a cop protecting them. Like, no, no. Like, yeah, I'm, from you guys. You're right. They're protecting us from you. You guys are violent. So Good call. Yeah. No, but for real, listen. If you, if you I'm so terrified. Yeah, I'm so terrified because I'm totally armed. Do you believe God controls everything? Gosh. This is his I mean, we're not scared of y'all. 
They just come because you guys have been Actually, violent. They come because y'all come here so that you can antagonize us. Right We're not antagonizing. You guys are the antagonists here. I'm not, I'm not we're just we're just we're just here proclaiming the gospel. Y'all have a right to express y'all's opinions, and you have the right to express ours. And have the right to our ways as you do. Yeah, we're not saying that you don't have those rights. We're just proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ to y'all. What do you say? I'm not a religious Okay. Well, where do you think you're gonna go when you die? I believe in the multiverse. Multiverse. Uh, we don't know anything. I think it's a derivative of the Russian mechanic. I think that that's and I think that when we die, we go where we think. Think about this. Think about this. I was raised. Well. And I was raised that does not let me be judged. I have a chemistry degree, so you're getting a lot from science. And I was raised that I, I, Jesus was a revolutionary who would be here today fighting for our rights. Well, no, he he actually he was said, he was condemned because he preached you against the sin. the woman who was about to be stoned for infidelity? And I don't believe in infidelity. I'm a very we are married, and I would and I would kill either one of us if we cheat. Like I'm not. Like, we love each other, and we plan on spending the rest of our lives and fulfilling our dreams together. Yeah, but if you do it, if you, if you don't, well, you have a right to do it, but in the eyes of God, it's sin. It's abominable. What did you say? Jesus literally defended a woman who was under stone's death and said, he who has never sinned cast the first stone. Yeah, he was saying that to people who actually were in sin, were hypocrites. He said that to the Pharisees, and what was their response? They were all convicted in their hearts because their conscience condemned them, that they were hypocrites. It's like, let's say if you're so I believe that you are reading a book that has been written by man and that has been translated multiple times by man instead of listening to him, how he talks to you. Do you think animals... Well, how does God speak to you? Do you think illiterate people and animals are incapable of getting to heaven because they can't read the Bible and follow its rules? You're talking about animals? Do you actually know one thing? Well, animal, animals... Here's a fun fact. Wait, hold on, hold on. Are we going to have a dialogue or are you just going to list a lot of points and then just I'm gonna say not allow me to... Listen to okay. In a previous translation of the Bible, before King James, there was a line that said, it was, do not like, man shall not lie with boy. No, that was that's false. That's false. And it was changed in the King James Version. That's false. His own interests. No, that, no, did you know King James didn't even touch the Bible? He just authorized it for the 54 translators that actually were the ones that translated it. It was that version that changed that line. No, that... You have the Greek. You have you have the Greek and the Hebrew to go back to, which are still there, the lexicons. And so when you see that in the lexicons, it never talks about pedophilia. It's talking about man being with man and woman being with woman and how it's abominable before God. So when you see where where is he? Like where do you go? Like he down here to us ourselves. Well, because Christ did come down before. And the reason why he rose again is so that way we could have eternal life with, with the Father. And so he sent his disciples out to proclaim the same message he was preaching. And that's the command that all Christians have to obey. Mark 16, 15 talks about that, and that's what we're doing. We're out here proclaiming the gospel, what Jesus preached, to lead sinners to him. What about the free religions that like, literally killed scientists back in the day because they were being... Wait, I, it's hard to hear. I'm sorry. sorry. The scientists back in the day that were killed by like religious groups because they were told they were defying God, we know that that's wrong now. Mm -hmm. So how can you say that what you're saying now is concrete when we've seen historically that you can't take it from and that yeah. people die as a result? Yeah. So any Christian or religious group that is killing someone in the name of Jesus is really not a Christian because what did Jesus command us? He he told us to not kill. He said, if your enemy smites you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. We're, 
the Ten Commandments. What'd you say? This is not in the Ten Commandments here. Yeah, but it's it's in the New Testament. It's in the Old Testament. It is in the Old Testament, but it's also re reaffirmed in the New Testament. The, the 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 you know what the law is for, right? Like, why are you taking that story? There's no sources in the Bible. There's no bibliography. Like. Like, no, like, what are you talking about? Like, the Bible doesn't have any, like, you can believe anything you want, that's fine, but it's just, like, if you're gonna tell people and, like, care, like, be angry enough to really come to a festival. I mean, well, like, we're not angry. We're not angry. We come out We come out here in love. So, to be clear, out of love, you're telling us that we should divorce our loving marriage and well, start a new life. Well, quite frankly. I should marry a woman and you should marry a fucking lady. That's not even what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that if you come to Christ, he will transform your heart to where this is no longer pleasing to you. Doesn't that sound a little like brainwashing to me? Like, I don't know, it just sounds really trying, like, a little problematic to me. Like, you're saying, come and join this group, we'll change your brain, and tell you, like, we'll make it so you can see that this is who you're actually supposed to love. Like, don't you see that's kind of cultish? Do you know no, it's not cool. To, well, I, I do want to address them. So, so I, I do want to address what each one of y'all say because one of y'all says something and then the other one starts talking. But as far as that goes, that's Jesus' promise to cleanse your heart, to give you a new, washed, and cleansed soul. What you, well, see that? Because Jesus said there would be wheat and tares. Tares are those who look like children of God, but they're not. They're actually living like hypocrites like the Pharisees did. That's why Jesus condemned the Pharisees because they were children of God and name only, but they were actually hypocrites. And you have many people like that in this world, like Catholics, Mormons, all these other religious people who are living in hypocrisy to Jesus, you know? But someone who's actually following Jesus will look and live just like Jesus lived. What do you say? Say that last part. Yeah, so Judaism too. I mean, they're they're rejecting their Messiah. Well, I, I I don't have. I'm not giving an exhaustive list. I'm just saying whatever comes to mind first. Yeah, but even Judaism, you know, they're resisting their Messiah. You know, Jesus Christ, Yeshua. They're, if they don't acknowledge Jesus as their Messiah, their Savior, then he will send them to the same place where sinners go. It's it. Well, because be there with a bunch of people who have their own set of rules and they're not even morally sound. It's like there's nothing. This doesn't hurt anyone. And you could argue that it hurts ourselves and our own souls, and that's your belief and your right to believe that. But you know what Jesus said? He said, "Live by the sword, not by the sword." That is a metaphor. That means you want to fight. You want to sit here with a sign that and just proclaim. Well, you actually took that verse out of context because he's actually that's literally speaking. No, it, there. no, it means if you Revelation. Can, if you Revelation fight, also speaks you about will that. Find you come no, in here that's not what it talks fine. about. He's speaking to Peter when he says that. If you live by the sword, you will die by the sword. We don't have literal swords in our hands. What? She knows things about the Bible that I should know. Yeah, I had it uh, fucking beat into so. me three times a day for my whole life by a man who proclaims everything that you're saying. You know, you're gonna commit genocide against everyone not who doesn't believe your ways. We're not gonna commit genocide. It's your ultimate it's a false accusation. Yeah, it's biblical to fear the Lord. I don't believe in fear the Lord, though. Yeah, but these verses say explicitly to fear the Lord and why it's beneficial. Not only these, but these on the back as well. But fearing the Lord, I don't know. So, so they're there so you have a false fear or an ungodly fear rather, where it's like you're in terror, you're you know completely scared. Um, and then you have the reverential fear. Like, you know, as a parent, when you raise your children, they have this reverential fear of their father or their mother. If they were to, you know, go out and party all night when their parents told them not to do that, there's consequences. So likewise with our, with the Heavenly Father, He has consequences for living a sinful life. So that, that's the reverential fear. What do you mean? Anything that transgresses God's law, what He has said, um, in his in his word. I don't know. That doesn't feel like a very healthy relationship with God. 
I see loving God, but not fearing. Well, with any relationship, you have boundaries, of you course, know? Yeah. And so, likewise with God, he has boundaries within the relationship people want to have with him through Jesus. If you want to have a relationship with him, he has boundaries. It's not just you do whatever you want. No one gets married and just had that mindset, I'm still going to live like a single bachelor or something, you know? They have boundaries within that marriage to not break. If they break them, there's going to be consequences. That's like the same thing as saying, oh, I fear my husband or I fear my wife. That's, that's kind of crazy. Well, no, they're, because with humans, we honor, you know, we honor people. Just like we should with God, we should honor God. We should have that holy reverential fear for him, you know, because, and people get fear mixed up with an ungodly fear, you know, because it also says in God's word that he's not given his children a spirit of fear, um, but he's given us love, um, a mind of love and a sound mind and uh, forget the last one, but he doesn't give us an ungodly fear like this world gives, you know? He gives us that holy reverential fear that happens whenever you see yourself in truth, when you see yourself in violation of his law. And the law of God is supposed to lead us to Christ, to lead us to the Father. Does that make sense? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It seems a little toxic to me, honestly. I don't know. What's your purpose of being here today? For all y'all. No, number one purpose is to give God glory. but. Other, my secondary purpose is to be here for sinners, to lead them to the Father. Are you trying to save the people here? Well, I'm not trying to save them, I'm just sowing seed. Jesus called the gospel, he likened it to a sower going out into the field and sowing seed. I don't determine the, the state of people's hearts, I just sow the seed, uh, the seed and determine the, the quality of the seed that I'm sowing. And do you believe that um, being gay is a crime? In, in, God's in God's eyes, yes. It's not my per I mean, I used to be a homosexual too. The Lord saved me from that. And now I'm married with the wife. Okay. God can change. He, he's changing homosexuals, transgenders, all of that. So when and you're that, homosexual, you're the top of the bottom. I'm not getting explicit with you, sir. That's wicked. Wow. I mean, I don't know. Um, I mean, if this is what you want to do, okay. I just don't think it's right. I don't think it's right to come yeah, here. Yeah, I don't think homosexuality is right either. Homosexual? I mean, God created homosexuals. That's the thing. No, God he created didn't. Everything. He created Satan. So, he created the heavens, the okay. Earth. God created. God created. Satan, he created Satan, but he created Lucifer yes. before he became Satan. That's right. Yes. And he created him as a perfect being, and he gave all his uh, angels and all his uh, creation on here on earth, like humans, free will to choose right or wrong. Since Satan rebelled against God, he's the tempter now to tempt humans uh, to sin. And so, since there is that temptation, you know, a lot of homosexuals are homosexuals because of their childhood. That influence being there or uh, being exposed to pornography at an early age or having a broken family figure, no father figure. There's all sorts of ways that, you know, people could become a homosexual. And no one is born that way. It's just a, it's a, an easy cop out for someone to live that lifestyle. Really? Yeah, it is. I, 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 I guess I don't agree with that. Yeah, I know y'all don't. The universe, he created everything. Of course, he created good and evil. Yeah, he, no, he didn't create evil. That's he didn't the thing. Evil, more. evil came from free will. Which who created that? God created us to have a free will choice, but God creating free will is not Him creating sin. We're because there's inventors of evil things. The Bible says we're the ones that invented evil. We're the ones that brought sin into this world. Who God created invented evil. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but God Himself directly did not create sin. No. But it's a part of God. It's a part of God. Therefore, He must. No, that's not a part of God. He created everything. Yeah, but just just because, like, let's just say I made a computer, right? That's not a part of me. That's just something that I created. Likewise, with God, Him creating humans and angels and cherubim and whatever it is, it's not it's not part of it. No, no, that child, for your child well, who they are, the but that's the thing. You have to be adopted into God's family to become, become a yeah. child of him. Y'all aren't children of God in your sin. I wasn't a child of God until I came to Jesus Christ and went through him to the Father. It talks about him adopting us into the... To the and I want him to save y'all. But y'all have to want to be saved. I used to be Christian. Until well, I realized, were you truly born again? Huh? Were you truly born again? I don't want to be born. Okay. I was baptized so, and everything, but then yeah. I started questioning things and things didn't make sense to me. Yeah, so, yeah, so a lot of people 
take the name Christian and they think, you know, just because they're born and raised or whatever they want to say into a church or whatever, that, that means they're a Christian. But a Christian is someone who has turned from their sin and is living holy for the Lord. Someone who has been born again, whose heart has been transformed to hate sin and to love righteousness. If that didn't take place and you weren't born again. I just think God created everything. God created good and evil. God created he didn't sin. create sin, though. I know that. He didn't. Yeah, God, God doesn't create sin. I mean, if it says that we were made in God's image, then that would make God that would make God a homosexual. And we well, know that he's not a homosexual. What did you say? He said we're not all homosexuals. Well, exactly. But if we're made in his image, don't you think that him making a man and a female to procreate, you would think that, you know, if homosexuals were made in that in that image, then God would also share some sort of likeness with that, which he doesn't. And also the thing is, there's homosexuality is also in other animals. Like, like well, so fans, the thing with animals, yeah, the thing with animals though, they do something wrong? well, the thing with animals, who ate the tree, who ate the fruit of the tree of, uh, of good and evil in the garden? Adam and Eve. Yeah, right. So since we have the ability to disobey God, we have the free will. Animals, they don't have that conscience level. They don't, they, they're not held to a standard that like we are as humans, you know? So we have the ability to choose to do evil and the ability to choose to do what is right in, in the eyes of God. Animals, they don't have a conscience like humans do. They don't have a soul like humans do. If you, if you raise, if you raise a, a dog to not pee in the house, they'll know that that's wrong because of what you're teaching it. They don't inherently know that it's wrong to do this. As opposed to human, we know that it's inherently wrong to just go up to someone and kill them. We just know that, you know? But it's not the case with animals. But hey, be safe. Okay. Be safe. Good luck. Can I give y'all something? Oh, we are fine. Thank you so it's much. It's right here. No, no, it's fine. Okay. Dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, what cause? the lusts of dishonoring their bodies. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. So what it's about to describe is a vile affection. Affection? Affections, uh. meaning that they think that they're loving, but they're not, it's vile. Yeah. Who, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one towards another. Oh, bless you. I'm a bless you. God. Hey. I don't actually want to talk about pride and you being in pride, but I do have a question for you. Okay. Do you feel as though you guys coming out here in this way actually converts people? Or yeah. That this way was effective with the, the early uh, disciples and Jesus and no, but I mean specifically with queer Yeah, so we're out here to spread the seed of, of the gospel. Sure. And before I, you know, answer your question, I want to answer it in this way. That uh, have you ever heard of the parable of the sower? So I don't, I don't want all that. I just oh, am well, curious. To that, that's know. how I'm going to answer the question, though. Okay, and I. Appreciate today, you telling me turn, that. And I hope turn you have a good day. Turn from your sins, okay. my friend. Well, turn from your sins. Please, today, turn while you have time. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of mercy. Today is the day of forgiveness. But tomorrow could be judgment day. If you die in sin, you will go to hell. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, starting at verse 9, it says, Do not be deceived. Know ye not that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. No liar, nor thief, nor fornicator, nor adulterer, nor idolater, nor homosexual, nor sodomite, nor covetous, nor reviler, nor extortioner will inherit the kingdom of God. And as such were some of you, but you've been washed clean. You've been sanctified and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sin. Good to see you. You must repent of your sins today while you still have time. My friends, I don't want you to go to hell. I love you. I do not hate you. I care enough about you to tell you the truth. I'm telling you what your so-called pastor on Sunday won't tell you. Romans chapter one says that God will give you over to your vile affections when women you use their body in an unnatural way and also men likewise who leave the natural use of their bodies and burn 
towards one another. Are you helping the homeless? They're you have to understand. You go help them. You go help them. You go help them. You go help them. Hypocrite. Why are you not doing it? Why aren't you not doing it? How do you know I don't? How do you know I don't? Exactly. Well, you just, you just contradict God. yourself. God is commanding you to God, repent of your God sin. You must turn away. God has a benevolent love for you, but he also turn hates from your you. Sin. The, book, the book of turn Psalms says in chapter 5, verse 5, Everybody. you hate all workers Not without Christ, you aren't. God. No, I feel pretty good like this. Of course you do. Sin feels pleasurable for a season. Yes, it is. At the end of your life, you will find out. This is the most peaceful thing I can do is tell people the truth. Bye, Stephen. Yelling is not peaceful. Jesus yelled. stop yelling. Jesus yelled. Jesus said to preach the gospel. The word preach in Greek is caruso. It means to loudly proclaim in public, to yell off of the rooftops. That is what we are called to do. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, Jesus says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We are called to share this loving message with you that if you die in sin, you will go to hell. That is the most loving thing I can do is warn you of the wrath that is coming. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. I do love you. Why don't you love me? Why don't you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Come in vain and you lie. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Thank you. I love you too. Thank you. I love you too. I love you too. But you got to stop sinning though. I do. Stop sinning. That's the most loving thing I can tell you. If you die in sin, you will go to hell. You have to understand, sinners don't go to the kingdom of God. Sinners go to hell. That's why you must repent today while you have time. All right. Oh, that, yeah. Where are your friends? Where are your friends at the parade? No, you're not. He's gonna stop us. Hopefully he'll stop them too. We have a right to be heard, sir. Can you have them? You don't hear that right Okay, so... Are you gonna, the are you gonna tell them to I'll turn mine to the same volume as that. Sound good? They played this song at the Pride thing up there in uh, Ohio, bro. Oh, really? Yeah. Must it's be a popular Pride song. Yeah, it's their favorite song. I see you calling, I be making the quick. I'm gonna answer that shit like I don't choose. You might want to do it high so it's over their head. Yeah, I'm going to, but one second before you put it on there. I mean, for real. Oh, he's moving. Uh, well, I'm not going to start it now because he walked oh, yeah. away. But we'd still set it up, yeah, just in case they come back. Y'all had to set up earlier, right? Yeah. No. No, we don't have this oh, set up. That was SOPA. I'm not going to use it now, but still yeah, keep it right there just in case. For sure. You want to preach, bro? Um, I want to preach more along the sidewalk. We can move up. Okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. You got it, bro? Yeah, here, take the sign for a sec. Over there, bro. Yeah, let's do it. My friends, where will you spend all of eternity if you were to die today? Where would you spend all of eternity if you were to die in your sin today? Because you can talk to him. The Bible said... I'll talk to you, sir. He's preaching. I'll talk. What's up? What anime is this from? There's no, there's no anime. Yeah, we're, this isn't a Japanese cartoon. This is, uh, this, is real, this is reality, man. This is real life. What, what TV show? No TV show. It seems a little far-fetched to me. I mean, you're just a facetious mocker. That's fine. You can be that way. I was young at one point, but you got to grow up and be a man one day. You look pretty young right now. No, I'm almost 30. I, I'm about midway to 30. Okay. Well, yeah, this isn't a TV show, man. This is real life. This is life or death. If you die in sin today, where are you going to go? I think nowhere. Endless void. So Hitler, Hitler got away with it? Pedophiles get away with it? They just get to rape little children? He didn't get away with it. Yeah, he did. He, he died. Yeah, he murdered millions of people and he just got two seconds and it's over with. Well, that, that, seems, he, that seems right for you, man? It's not right, but it's well, 
In my, in my worldview, righteousness is always going to be done. It's going to happen. In my worldview, Hitler is in hell being tormented right now for the disgusting acts he caused. That makes just like, better, I think you, just like what's going on in Isra over in Palestine right now in Israel with Hamas, yeah, murdering innocent horrible. little babies, it, beheading them. You horrible. think that that's okay? Yeah, it's horrible. It's well, not, who cares? It's There's no, okay. Do you believe in there's a God? No. So who cares? It's just matter fizzing with each other. Who cares? So what? Where, where's your moral grounds? Where do you get to choose right from wrong? Moral ground comes from within. You, you shouldn't be a good person just because God will strike you down if you're a bad no, person. No, 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 no. I actually don't believe you need to believe in God to have morals. And the reason is, is because God gave you morals. You know right from wrong in your heart whether you believe in him or not. We know right from wrong. And it's objective. It's not subjective. It's yeah, always right wrong, wrong to... Is, it, like, that is objective, but I don't yeah. really believe that it's some God somewhere is the but, you, but you do know that it's always wrong to murder a baby well it's yeah. always doesn't well, matter yeah it's always it's, wrong to if there's a person you should not kill them. That's there it. you go there you go so yeah you you agree that morals are objective they don't come from within they are they're not subjective they don't change based on your location age um uh, religion morals don't change they're the same whether we agree with them or not right like per perfect example the the slave owners 200 years ago in this country they thought what they were doing was right because they had been taught a Christian worldview that said, you could, first off, you could own slaves, which isn't what the Bible teaches. Secondly, that black people were less evolved. They were actually more animalistic, weren't even all the way human. Thirdly, they owned them as property, so they were righteous to do what they did. That's definitely wrong. But that came from within their hearts. And you're saying it's wrong, so you agree that morality is objective whether we like it or not. But you're saying that the subjective morality comes from God, but it doesn't. No, no, I say objective morality comes from God. Subjective morality isn't even real. It's, it's like that's a... Yeah, that's a... I don't really think... I think we're like too far apart. So you don't believe in objective morality? I believe in objective morality. Where does it come from? So where does it come from? It comes from our own programming. How we that would be subjective, though. Because each person has their own programming and they agree and disagree on certain things. Certain amount of programming so where do you get to? But you no, know, I don't think you. I don't think you understand the disconnect here. How do you get to say to the slave owner, "Black people are, are humans; they're not property"? How do you get to say that to them if they believe their their morality, their programming tells them that it's okay? But at that point, society has to tell them that they're wrong. But they're society not, agreed not with them. No, no, no. Society agreed with them. There was a whole so war fought over it. Mainstream society did not. And yeah, that, it did. That, that's the point. Yeah, it, it did. To convince them and by force that it's wrong and they should stop. Yeah, but you understand, most of society in their area agreed with it 100%. And it still does. Still, still agrees. Well, but you understand, though, you're, you're saying that morality comes from within our programming. But then I give you an example of someone whose programming goes against your worldview, and now you change and move the goalpost. Either morality is objective, and it's right or wrong whether you like it or not, or it's subjective, and it changes based on people. I think people. the trap you're calling into is the fact that you're assuming it's black and white. Some amount of like social behavior comes from the fact that humanity would have made it this far if we all killed each other. Yeah, mor mor morality morality is, is absolutely black and white. There's no gray. There's no gray. There's no in between like obviously it's like stuff like slavery entirely wrong and People then they're programmed yeah from their culture to do that and, and you understand the reason i'm using the the really excessive like extreme example is because if your if your worldview doesn't work on small pebbles it's not going to work on large boulders either oh yeah i feel like it's unreasonable to assume one world view supports every situation like morality is not black and white Life it is, is black and white though white. it is though I'm okay for per okay give me an example when is it okay to murder a child Give me one example. Just when, one. When do you define a child happening? Like, what, at what point is something a child? When it's alive. A cell is alive, right? What, what do you consider alive? Its own unique genetic code. Given its time and environment, it will be a human being. You it's currently a human being just because of its environment. It doesn't change. Its level of development doesn't change. None so of these things change if, the fact that it's alive. If you, if you masturbate and you come and genetic code goes out into the void and dies. Is that killing no, a child? No, it's not. That that's not a living cell. It is a living. No, cell. it's not. No, it's, it's not. Moving. It's moving. No, 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 it's no, 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 no. You don't you don't seem to understand the difference between uh, mitochondria and cells. There's there a big difference. No, there, there, there are, are things cells. there are things that, that have the appearance of life that are not alive, like a virus. It's the same thing. It's not the same. No, it, it's very, very, it's, it, it, listen, sperm by itself 
is not, it doesn't have a metabolism. It doesn't it's react to, no, it doesn't react to stimulus. It only has one job, it just moves, it that's it. No, it doesn't. It doesn't react to stimulus, man. It can. No, it goes straight it until it dies, or it hits the egg, one or the other. It, it doesn't react to stimulus, man. Oh, my, my partner's getting bored, but what about an egg then? That has unique genetic code. It doesn't react to stimulus. It doesn't have a metabolism. Those two cells have to come together. The fetus doesn't either. Yeah, it does. No. Fetuses do. So you don't believe that a single-celled organism on Mars is alive then? I don't really think there are any, but I, I gotta go. You gotta repent of your sins, man. You gotta turn. You gotta, you you gotta give it up. I don't have sin, man. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus today. Jesus Christ can set you free. Have a fabulous day. I will with Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Jesus Christ will set you free if you come to him. The mocker and the scoffer will not inherit the kingdom of God. The homosexual will not inherit the kingdom of God. But my friends, and I know you aren't, thank you for being honest, sir. <clears throat> Jesus Christ can put you on the straight and narrow path today to straighten you out where you no longer have to live in the indulgence of your sin where you no longer have to follow the pleasures of your genitalia. Your genitalia no longer has to be your God because let's be honest, what you call love in this community is actually lust. What you call love in this community is actually lust. Yeah, you're wicked. You need a, you need a change. You need to come to Jesus. Yeah, it's true, that's why. It's true of you. You indulge in your sin. My friends, it's not love, it's love, it's lust. Sure. It's lust. Uh, you, you don't believe, know true love. So obviously you're against, you know you're against abortion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't think it's ever wrong to kill a child. Period. I mean, ever right? No longer. No, uh, excuse me. Yeah, sorry. I, I think it's always wrong. I meant to say always. I don't think it's ever right. In this country, there is an interesting uh, legal construct, and I'm, w I'm wondering if you agree with it. That's oh, my friends, turn to Jesus today. I got Jesus. Thank you. No, you don't. No, you don't. You hate him. You won't tell me. Because you're fruit. You're fruit. You're fruit. Turn to turn to Jesus. Jesus says that if you if you have him, you'll bear his spirit. You'll bear the fruits of the spirit. I don't, I don't well, God used ignorant men to proclaim his word. I don't know, will he? Yes, he did. <laughs> but you're really ignorant in your sin. Oh, no. Yes, you are. And those who mock the gospel are just enemies of the gospel. If you, if you love your sin, you'll hate Jesus. If you love Jesus, you'll hate sin. And this is why you cannot have Jesus in your sin. Because if you have the true Jesus, you won't love your sin. You'll be transformed. And when you're transformed, your heart will no longer love the things of this world. And so if you come to know Jesus today, he can set you free from your homosexuality. He can set you free from your fornication. He can set you free from your perverse living. I am free, sir. Yeah, no, they don't. You don't need it. I've gone, I've gone months and months and months without it. I've, it's actually well, been two years for me since I've had sex. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a weird religious thing. Most people. No, it's not a weird like religious thing. It's an exception to your, to your what you just stated, and you don't like that. But it's I true. Mean, you don't need sex. Sex is not a necessity. Nikola Tesla was a virgin when he died. Never had sex, man. Jesus never had sex. Died without ever once having sex. I, I don't actually believe that. We, of course you don't believe it, but it's true. You, I mean, so says you, but listen, you can't you can't take your own personal experience and project it onto others. It's, it's, a, it's a fallacy. It's an illogical argument. I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm telling people the truth. I'm warning them about what will happen. You say because you went two years without sex, everyone should do it. No. I didn't say anyone should go without sex. Get married. If you want to have sex, get married. There's nothing wrong with sex. That's a construct. I mean, so says you. This is the way God designed it. A man for a woman. Have you ever done a jigsaw puzzle? I mean, 
Yeah. Would you force a piece that doesn't go somewhere to go there just to finish it? People aren't jigsaws. But see, if I'm not allowed to use any metaphor at all, then why would you use the metaphor of a legal term about removing someone's uh, liver against their will? I'm using the same type of argument right now. This is the same. You can't invalidate abortion. my argument and then yours abortion is okay. Is the same person is the same thing though. I mean, you're forcing a woman to carry. I'm a not baby forcing a woman to carry a baby. She put herself in this position by having sex outside of marriage and got getting pregnant. Listen, women. Women know. Women know. Generally, almost all women know if you have sex, you're risking getting pregnant. It's, you know this. But in our society, we don't really have the capability to deal with millions of people like we used to. If you used to have to have 10 kids, you used to have two make it to adulthood. We would destroy the planet, and it would be not fun for anyone if everyone just had infinite That's just not true, man. You've been lied to. That's just not true. There's so much room on this planet right now. So much room. That's just not true. Just yeah. because there's impoverished countries that can't withstand an infrastructure of having that many people, who can still live in modern day life with our pleasures, doesn't mean it's not possible for people to live on earth there's thousands and thousands of acres of, of forest and wildlife in almost every state of this country there's much less canada russia there's so many places for people to live that's just a it's an irrelevant argument it's ridiculous to say that i'm talking about space but i'm talking about the fact that we're going to destroy the environment if we have too many people. that's like, not even yeah, true i mean sure if everybody out. starts driving cars and pumping stuff into the atmosphere but the thing is this world's going to dis be destroyed one day anyway God's coming back to destroy this world and start over. That's not happening. I mean, says you, you probably believe in evolution, huh? But you must acknowledge your sin. Your arms are gonna get tired keeping that over your head with like a sticker. No thanks. It doesn't say anything bad. Yeah, but I don't need a man giving me a sticker that says you are beautiful. That's creepy. Do you believe God is moral? I believe he has a moral code that we need to live by. All right, so how about when he killed 42 children for they're simply calling some guy bald. Well, it never says that they were killed. It just says that they're mauled. And without medical attention back, then you would die. Well, <laughs> you don't. You don't know that they could just have their arm chewed off or something. But it, do, it never says that. <laughs> it never says that they actually died. How about when uh, when he killed uh, David and Bathsheba's uh, kid? Well, that's uh, judgment. Why did he judge the kid? Why didn't he punish them? Well, he did punish them by taking their by kid. By killing their kid. What right. Did the kid, what did the kid do? Well, the kid's with God now. Because David even said, I would see my child that he took away. And, meaning that he's in heaven. And Job, when he killed his kids? Well, it actually didn't say that God killed Job's kids. It was actually it Satan. Three of his kids. It was Satan. But who made the bet with Satan? Who made the what? The bet with Satan. He said, there was I, no bet. No. He said, he said. He allowed Satan to do that. Yeah, it, because he wanted him to prove Because to he him, brings destruction. No, he wanted him to prove to him that... that uh, and how were Job's kids living, by the way? They weren't living holy. So and you a, know what the Bible says, right? The wages of sin is death. And that's moral? Yes, absolutely. Murder is moral? It's not murder if it's just. So where is their free will if... if they have free will. But okay, just so like just like Job's kids had the free will choice to choose to live in lasciviousness, God, he will judge based off those choices because yes, we have a free will choice to choose to do right or wrong, but told, but there's always a consequence on both sides. If I told you to love me and I said you have the the free will to, but I put a gun to your head? I mean, I still have a choice. Yeah. I still have a choice. I'm not forced to do anything. Would you consider me evil then? If you have a gun to my head, yes. So because God has a gun to everyone's head. No, saying, no, he doesn't have a you, gun. If you don't love me, then you're gonna go to hell. Do you want to listen? I'll kill you. So Do you want to listen to me too? Well, absolutely. Well, but let me the finish my sentence. Well, go I'm ahead. I, I, I said it. Okay, so the reason why it's just for God to do so is because has God ever sinned before? Uh, if you consider murder a sin, then yeah. No, the reason why it's not a sin, and the <laughs> point I'm making. The point that I'm making is that God has never sinned. So for him to kill somebody is because of their sin. And the reason so if why- I, If the I reason, kill someone for their sin, No, because, just, because you are in sin. You have sinned before. There, therefore, it's no longer right for us to take someone's life. Yeah. And when you, when you <laughs> read the New Testament, it actually tells us to, to love our enemies, to turn the other cheek. If they punch the right cheek, give them the left cheek. This is the new covenant that God is that is given us. And uh, how about judging other people? 
Well, so what do you mean by judgment? Like you're over here saying that everyone's going to hell and... Well, I'm not saying uh, everyone's going to hell. All these people are going to hell. Well, people who are in their sin will go to hell. And we're all in our sin. Here. No. I, there's believers here that aren't in their sin preaching against this so that's why I don't use the term everyone's going to hell well everyone you're preaching to right yeah everyone who's in their sin they definitely belong in hell just like I did I'm not any different you know the Lord saved me the only difference is because the only difference is that I'm abiding in the Lord as opposed to those who aren't abiding in the Lord and why do you believe in God in the Bible? what do you mean why, why do you I believe? believe well is it just faith Huh? Is it just faith? Well, faith does have a part in it for sure. But I would also say, because I wasn't raised as a Christian, I wasn't raised into it. Well, if you're dead and your brain is not functional, you probably wouldn't have dreams. Well, you believe, in the, you believe in the conservation of mass and energy, right? And the laws of I mean, thermodynamics of state that, that you know energy or matter cannot be created or destroyed. It only changes forms. Yeah. You have a uh, solid can turn into liquid or gas. You know, energy can turn from a positive current or a negative current or a direct current or an alternate current. But the problem is, is your brain has electricity running yeah. through chemicals. And those things put together create your consciousness according to the secular worldview. Yeah, those things don't go away. They stay in the universe when you die. So even in a secular well, worldview... The energy's around. So I guess technically part of you will come back. Like we formed it. No, no, it doesn't come back. It just doesn't go away. It just yeah. stays there. It, it's around. It changes into different things. So, so realistic... I'm just, I'm just using this as a, realistically speaking, my belief that your soul exists outside of your body is not even really unscientific in any way. It's just adding a little bit of speculation as to where the energy of your brain goes after you die. I believe it's- Have you heard of the 21 grams? 21 grams? Yeah, there, there's a study done on a couple of bodies of, of people as they were passing away. And almost every time the average number of weight that a person loses a, a, upon them taking their last breath and dying, yielding up the ghost, so to say, they lose about 0. 0.21 grams uh, of weight. So you, you believe that the soul weighs about 20? No, no, I, I just, I, I'm just bringing up a scientific study that was done I mean, yeah, I, I believe whenever you die, you whether you believe it or not, uh, immediately electricity in your head turns into heat. It does stay in the universe; it doesn't go away, but it's not. Really well, you have to deal with that, though. You have to deal with that, though. Where does it go? What happens with it? It's right? heat. Like, what, what if you're wrong, though? What if you're wrong, though? What if you die and you stand before a righteous God so, and you have all this sin okay, in your there, heart, man? There is a chance. There is a universe in because which you're right. Let's what let's if, use Pascal's wager. You know what that is? No. Pascal's wager states that. If I'm right and you're wrong and you die, there's hell to pay. But if you're right and I'm wrong and I die, I didn't do anything wrong, so what? Okay, so you-, you Pascal's believe... wager states that you have more to lose than me in this situation. So, so you're a Christian, right? Absolutely. You, you believe in but God. In the biblical sense of the term yeah, Christian, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Not in the worldly sense. Yeah, so, yeah. so you, you, believe in, you believe in this God. Uh, what if I told you you're almost as much of an atheist as me? Like, How so? I don't believe in every God that has ever been created by humanity. You don't believe in every God that has ever been created by humanity, except one. Without any evidence. I'll give you this, okay? <laughs> well, there's actually a ton of evidence. There's a ton of evidence. Um, and to say that, a atheistic scholars would laugh at that fallacious claim that you just made right there. Because they would identify that Jesus was a true figure. But um, was he got some? That, that's where they don't make that, because they don't believe the just, resurrection. That's what I'm saying, but just just because Jesus might have been a real guy doesn't Well, that's mean the thing. They can't, like, they can't disprove the resurrection from happening. The resurrection truly happened. You there don't is, need to disprove a claim that's, that's for better luck, or like a, a crazy like claim. Like if I said, if I said a portal was about to open up and fucking unicorns and stuff were gonna jump out. Yeah, but you have you, the eyewitnesses me, that, that all saw the same thing. Or if I said, and some of them have said that they all hallucinated and saw the same thing. That's more. Every that's book more. Of the Bible faith. was written seventy plus years after. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. <laughs> All right, I'll see you. Okay. Take that claim. Show me one. Just one. I would have to pull it up. You sure would because you don't know, because you, you're making that claim. You, you've heard that. You, with all due respect, you probably heard that from somebody and you're parroting it, which is fine. The Bible's the same way, though. It's just heard, it's passed down. But the, diff the difference is, no, but the difference is I have the author of the Bible in my heart. I have the author who wrote that Bible through holy men. Holy men, not, in, not unholy men. People who obeyed God, lived righteous, didn't tell lies, didn't steal. They were righteous men, holy, 
wrote it down at exactly the right time. See, my God, he's outside of space, time, and matter, and he knows exactly when and where to do something to get his will done. I just don't believe that a 2,000-year-old game of telephone is accurate. But you believe in a you believe in a you believe in a 14.6 billion-year-old uh, well, game of telephone. Well, that could be scientifically proven. How so? There have been millions of people in the scientific field who have spent their entire So you're going with the ad populum now. argument? Be well, I, because a lot of people believe it, it's true. Because a lot of people study it. I, that's, that's a, a lot, But that's a fallacy, though. That's the ad populum argument is a fallacy, though. Just because a lot of people agree with it and believe it doesn't make it true. A lot of people who study their field for their I study life. my field for, for a, quite a while now. But there's is no my about proof that it's right. Says you. It's a book from 2,000 well, years ago. You can't, you can't measure that. Yeah, you, you can. Measure. You can take those words and apply them to your life right now. It's seeable, testable, and demonstrable and observable. Let me know if you want to go. I don't want to. <laughs> I, I just want to go further down that way. Here's the thing, man. If you never have sex outside of marriage, you'll never catch an STD. You'll never get a woman pregnant out of wedlock. You'll never have those issues. That's seeable, testable, and demonstrable. If you obey God and not do those things, you'll never get those type of things happening to you. What if you obey God and you just get really unlucky? You get hit by a car crossing the road and you die. What if, happens? if you're living holy and you're righteous, you go straight to be with the Lord. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's how the Lord wills you to go out. If you were living according to his will, wouldn't yeah. he want you to stay on the world? And no, the Lord calls people home sometimes, man. God gives life, so he could take it away. He could just decide. How do, you not, how do you know that you getting hit by that car wouldn't cause a person driving that car to recognize that they're in need of a savior and repent and become a born-again Christian and go that, preach the gospel themselves? That doesn't seem helpful, though. Well, you're, you're looking if, at it. The problem. God existed, why would, he, why would he allow this much suffering? So why now we get to the real issue, the heart of the problem. So, first off, we have to understand, you don't get to anthropomorphize God and put him into a humanistic term. God exists outside of creation and designed you with a purpose. You don't get to hold God to your morals. God holds you to his morals, first off. They're just establishing that. Secondly, the reason why wickedness, evil, molestation, rape, murder, all this happens in the world is because God has given you free will. Now, why does God give people free will knowing that they'll do these things? Quite simple. If God forced you to obey him, believe in him and worship him, you'd be a robot. If you took a gun right now and God forbid put it to this person's head and forced them to do stuff with you, would it be love on your part? I mean, obviously not. Would it be love on their part? Obviously not. Exactly. So you would choose to love this person and they choose to love you back. That's the same with God. He chose to love you and create you and he expects you to choose to love him back. The only way you can choose to love him is if you had the option to choose not to and I mean, to disobey him and to go against him. I mean, this is an interesting, interesting theory, you know, but I still don't see like where it's actually coming from. Well, the point I'm making is that all the wickedness in the world, you can't blame that on God. Blame it on the people because they're choosing to do it. God tells them, hey, don't do this. And they do it anyway. I guess I wonder what's the point. Why would God create these people? Because he what, loves them. What's his... He wants them to choose to love him back. God, the Bible says God does not will that anyone should perish, but come to everlasting life through repentance. He doesn't want anyone to go to hell. But the truth, let's be honest. The truth is people love sinning. They love doing what makes them feel good over what God wants for their life. It seems like it would be easier for God to just never have any kids, honestly. Well, that's the problem is you're anthropomorphizing <laughs> God again. It's one thing when you anthropomorphize things around you, but it's another when you try to go outside of space, time, and matter and hold that to your own standard. Because then you yourself would have to be God to make that righteous judgment. I mean, God is outside of space, time, and matter, man. He, he doesn't exist here inside of this world. He chose to manifest himself as a man. Because remember, man is always trying to be God. People are always striving after power and control over others. They want to be God and be worshipped and be looked at and look at me, the pride of life. Right? I'm, I'm an engineer. I can't believe in things I can't measure. But you it's an interesting. You, wait, you don't believe in things you can't measure? Wait a minute. Have you ever have you ever measured the the wind? Yeah. How? You use a little little fan blowing the air air molecules and fan turns. It's it's fairly straightforward. It's measured all the time. Like look at the weather. It's, well, look look at holy men who live holy for God, who deny themselves, who don't fall into sin every day. That's measurable. That's seeable, testable, and demonstrable. It prove anything. Like, well, I, I could decide your fan it, doesn't I, prove anything. I could sit under that tree until no, but, I die of starvation. But your fan, but your anything. fan doesn't prove anything either. You just see it spinning, and you write down a couple of numbers, and you think that that proves something. It's still, a, it's still a theological construction in your mind. It doesn't prove anything. If, if going by your worldview, there's really, there's really no way to prove anything. You have no so right to believe you, anything you that you experience. The world is a simulation caused by God, basically. No, it's not, it's not a simulation. It's not a simulation. It's real. It exists. That is an interesting theory. Strong and weak force, the magnetic 
uh, electromagnetic spectrum, gravity, all these things are real. They're, they exist, you know? I have a question. Sure. Um, kind of not on this topic. Do you disagree with churches that accept gay people? Absolutely. Because they twist God's word. In fact, their damnation might even be worse than homosexuals. Because they try to twist God's word to justify something God despises. If, if a person wants to be a homosexual, fine, be a homosexual. But don't twist God's word into justifying something because you feel so good about it and you want to have God and your sin. You can't have your cake and eat it too. If you want to eat the cake, eat it. If you want to have the cake, preserve it. But don't try to do both because it's impossible. You know what I mean? And I say that in love. I'm not like bashing anyone. I love everybody. I don't want anyone to go to hell. That's why I'm out here today. But if a person twists God's word, their damnation is will be worse than the people who they're twisting it for. Yeah, God's word says what it says. Whether we like it or not, God despises homosexuality. So despises your, your source for this is the Bible, right? Of course it is. Why would it be anything else? And you're, you, this is kind of an unrelated question. You already said you're entirely anti-abortion. Yeah. Why would they provide instructions on providing abortions in the Bible? That's not, that's not, that's not what it's talking about. That, that was in the case specifically for adulterous women. They would take this concoction, and if the baby died, it proved that they were an adulterer, first off. And secondly, the baby, who's innocent, goes to be with the Lord. But that woman didn't wake up wanting to kill that baby. In fact, they didn't even want to go do it because women back then had dignity and respect and wanted to keep that baby alive. They cherished life. So That was at a time where so abortion gave, wasn't even a conception. So they gave the Nobody just went around, oh, I'm pregnant, they, killed their baby for their own convenience. No, they, but what they about did. herbal medicine treatments for them? The Romans what about actually it? had this... Yeah, but the Romans were pagans who worshipped other gods. We're talking about righteous men. They were Christian at the end, in the end though. Well, yeah, but guess what? When they became Christian, guess what they stopped doing? I believe, <laughs> well, they made it extinct, though, the plant that they used to... Look, the... The, 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 point, the point I'm making, man, is that it's never okay to kill a baby. And if you think it's okay to kill babies in, in, in the womb, why not go ahead and support Hamas when they behead all those little Israeli babies? What's the difference? That actually was disproven. There is not actually evidence that they did that. Like, they've done a lot of horrible things. Dude, you sound like a Holocaust denier right now. I actually know people in Israel right now that I've spoken to. This, this stuff is really happening. This isn't fake news. This is a real event, dude. You're living, you're living in, a, in a time of human history that's changing. You can't just go around it. If your if you're, if you're skepticism becomes septic, you need to be able to realize it. I mean, you literally, what you just if said... If your belief becomes septic, you need to realize that, too. My belief isn't septic. Listen, man, you you got to repent of your sins, man, for real. You take that? There's no name or number or donation page on there. It's just God's word. Just read it. If you don't like it, throw it away. I think, I mean, honestly, I think this is probably a more enlightening conversation than reading anything, but yeah. thank you for explaining your views. It was sure. God bless. Hope you all have a good one. Do you mind sharing your first name with me? You don't have to. Mine's Paul. I'm Larry. Larry? Stephanie. Stephanie? God bless you, Larry and Stephanie. You all have a good day, okay? <laughs> okay. God commands all men everywhere to repent. There is coming a day or you will have to answer to God for your lifestyle. You have to give an account for the things done in this body, for the fleshly deeds that you do. You'll have to give an account for it. There is a right and there is a wrong in this world. There is a right and there is a wrong in this world. And you'll have to give an account for what you do. Morality is objective, whether you agree with it or not. Whether you agree with morality or not, it's right or it's wrong. And the Bible says that to obey God is right and to disobey him is wrong. If you die in disobedience to God, you will inherit eternal damnation. You will not enter into the kingdom of God as a sinner. The only way you will inherit the kingdom of God is through obedience. The Bible says that God requires obedience over sacrifice. You must obey the Lord. And God says sexual immorality leads to hell. If you're a wicked, disgusting pervert, you'll go to hell. It's not worth it. Don't let your genitalia determine your eternal fate. Deny yourself. Turn away from yourself. Turn away from the deeds of the body. Die to the flesh and live in the spirit. The Bible commands us to live in the spirit, to worship God in spirit and in truth. Not, not be hearers of the word but be doers of the word. Bible says, do not be a hearer only, but a doer of the word. 
You must repent of your sins today, my friend. Turn where there's still time. You're alive right now. Your body is inhaling oxygen on God's earth, feeding blood through the body that God gave you. And it's gonna die one day. Your heart will take its last breath one day. Your lungs will inhale their last breath one day. And where will you go when you die? What will happen to you when you die? You will stand before a righteous God and you'll have to give an account for everything you've ever said, every thought you've ever had, and every word and every deed that you've ever done. I tell you today, my friends, I don't hate you. I don't despise you. I love you. I want you to know the truth. The truth will set you free, free from sin, free from disgusting things that God despises. The Bible says in Romans chapter one that God will eventually turn you over to a reprobate mind. Yeah, little babies in the mother's womb are being genocided today. Idiot. There is a genocide happening. Innocent children are being murdered around the world. You must repent of this. Abortion is murder. If you don't want to get pregnant and you don't want a baby, don't have sex. Very simple, easy solution. This solution doesn't require the murdering of another person. It doesn't require ingesting chemicals that cause cancer. Very simple solution, obey God. See, obedience to God will never lead you in the wrong direction, ever. It will always be edifying to obey God. No, I'm not. I have no reservations in hell anymore. I'm going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ who gave his life to save us from sin, not to leave us in sin. Man. What kind of fireman leaves somebody in the fire? They pull people out of the fire and then they go and put the fire out. And Jesus is our eternal spiritual fireman. He goes and pulls you out of darkness into his wonderful light. He pulls you out of sin into obedience and he goes back and he destroys that sin. There's firemen who have died saving people's lives. They go into the fire, they pull people out, and they die of smoke inhalation, of cancer later on. They die because they saved someone. Jesus died to save you from your sins, my friends. That's right. Turn from your sins today. Please, I beseech you, do not be disobedient to God's will and die and go to hell. God does not delight in that. He takes pleasure in the death of those who are obedient because they get to go to be with him. But if you die in sin, my friends, do not be deceived. You will go to hell. Please, today, will you have time, repent in Jesus' name. God is calling you to repentance today, my friends. Please surrender your life to Christ while you still have time. Don't be a sinner. Sinners don't go to the kingdom of God. You should be ashamed of yourself. Why would I be ashamed of Jesus? Why would you say that about me? What did I do to you? No, I'm not. I love people. I think you should be ashamed of yourself, ma'am. You're supporting people on their way to hell. How much do you have to hate someone to want them to go to hell? Oh, really? Have you read Romans 1? You have First Corinthians. Corinthians. I'll read it out loud for you right now. Go for it. In Romans chapter 1, Paul is talking about... You got a filthy potty mouth, sinner. You got to repent. You got a filthy potty mouth. What is love? 
What is love? Oh, this is love. What you're spreading is hate. Is love accepting everyone just the way they are? Yeah. Do you accept pedophiles just hey. the way they are? No. So you don't have all love then? Hey, hey. hey. There goes your hey. worldview hey. down the toilet. You know where the pedophiles come from? The LGBT hey. community. Hey. The LGBT hey. community. Hey. Teaching hey. six-year-olds to mutilate their genitalia, right? Hey. Come on now. Nobody is Come on now. Okay. Come on now. But you know You're what? deceived. One day you will wake up and you will feel that love and then I will be right. We already have the love that you don't have. I can tell. They're We're giving you something I that you tell. don't have. You guys seem like you're full you of love. Same with y'all. Absolutely. See, you got a perverted mind. That's all you think about is sex. No. You got to deny your body, man. Sex, man. So Just this is away. all surrounded Bye. by Bye. sex. Bye. Goodbye. It's a wicked. Absolutely wicked. Oh, it's filthy. That cop's definitely not for us, though. Oh, no, he's against us. Absolutely he's shown that us. multiple times. No, I'm okay. Hey, buddy, you look a little lost. You do, too. Turn to Jesus Christ today. Tomorrow is not promised. You could die in your sin today. And if you die as a homosexual, you will go to hell. And Jesus Christ can put you on the straight and narrow path and straighten you out today. But you must come to know him and not just know of him. Because many of you only know of Jesus and don't know him. And it does not take being a Hitler to go to hell. The Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire which burns with fire and brimstone. And if you're living in sin, you're in hatred towards God because you can't love your sin and love God at the same time. And if you say that you do, what do you say? Who's being hateful here? Well, there's many homosexuals that hate Christians and hate God. But if you call this hate telling people the truth, then you think that truth is hate. And it's- These are happy people. No, they're, they're really not happy people. Sin is pleasurable for a season. For nothing, you fall for anything. you ever tried dick? I'm not answering any explicit questions like that. That's filthy. Have you ever tried dick? Why are you so wicked? So how do you know you're not gay? The Lord saved me from my sin. Saved you, so you were gay? Absolutely, yeah, I was. Oh, so you're just projecting? No, I'm not. The Lord saved me from my sin and I'm here proclaiming. You're projecting. I'm proclaiming. You probably want him. You're projecting too, right? You aren't, probably want aren't him. Aren't you projecting yourself as well? Oh, you I like girls. Me. I like men. I like trans so you are men. Projecting. I like women. You are I like anything in the world. You are projecting. Therefore, we are projecting. You're just a God piece of you. shit. God bless We love you. See, we don't say you're a piece of shit. We say we love you because we're Christian. You are projecting and we are projecting. We love you. In the name of Jesus Turn from Christ. your sin. Turn to Jesus Christ today. Jesus Christ can set you free from your sin today. You must fear the Lord and depart from evil because your sin will send you to hell. Your sin has a 100% fatality rate. And if you don't come to know Jesus today, there will be no Jesus day on the day. The gays, Jesus never said the that gays don't love gay. Jesus. The gays don't love Jesus. The gays don't love Jesus. The gays don't love Jesus. The gays love the wrong Jesus. Jesus said that there would be many false Christs that shall arise in the last days. And the, the Jesus that you love is the Jesus that's okay with your sin. And there's many false fake pastors out here that are conforming to the things of this world rather than coming against the things of this world. And if your pastor is saying that it's okay to be gay, you have a false pastor. You have a wolf in sheep's clothing. A wolf in sheep's clothing who do not care for the flock of God, but are ravenous and want to destroy you. But my friends, Jesus Christ is the good shepherd and he can lead you to green pastures. He can lead you to the Father, but you must come through him to get to the Father. Do you want a hug? No, I don't want a hug. Do you want Jesus? Do you want Jesus? I don't want your hug. I'm married, I don't need your hugs. 
Maybe, maybe Jesus needs a hug. No, he needs you to repent. You need to repent. But what if we all hug? What did you say? What if we all hug? The mockers won't inherit the kingdom of God. If you're mocking, you can be sure that you're against God. I think I am kind of mocking. Yeah, I know you are. It's all over you. What did you say? I'm not angry. No, I just don't want a stranger hugging me. I'm married. I don't need I don't need a stranger to hug me. No, I don't want to. No, it's okay. I can give you a Bible track though. Okay. Right there. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, I know you do. But don't be angry. I'm not angry. Jesus hates sin. It actually says in Psalm 5, 5 that God hates the workers of iniquity. And in Psalm 7, 11, God is angry with the wicked every day. So if anything causes a righteous person to be angry, it is sin. No, but there's a lot of things that happen in the Bible that you just kind of pick and choose what we don't want to believe. Like right? what? Like stoning our neighbors or wives. No, it never says to stone your neighbor or your say, wife. What do you say about stoning somebody? Stoning well, your daughters and cows? Well, first off, <laughs> Jesus came to fulfill the law of Moses for us to be under a new covenant. So that the old covenant is the promise and the new covenant is the promise being fulfilled. But the things that are in the Bible that just don't make sense. So like, like what? Because the Bible actually says that the Bible will not make sense to those who aren't of a spiritual mind. So if you're not born again, you won't understand the word of God. It's just true. How do you know that I'm not born again? Because your fruit. Fruit? Your fruit, your actions. Did you say my fruit? Jesus says you'll know a tree by its fruit. Oh. Yes. I mean, he's so, really cute. You're very handsome. You're wicked. <laughs> you're wicked. You're gay. We'll have to uh, agree to disagree, but thanks. Okay, that's fine. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Turn to Jesus. The Bible commands all men everywhere to repent, to believe the gospel to turn from their sin and to live holy unto the Lord. Because without holiness, no man will see Jesus. Without holiness, no man will see eternal life. And if you don't have eternal life today, Jesus is offering you eternal life today. You can have eternal life with the Father today. And it's so sad that people bring their children here. It's so, it, yeah, I'm gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about that. You can smack me all you want. My God will deal with you accordingly. What? I should spit in your face, but I'm not going to. Okay. Yeah, you're a coward. You're a coward. You're a disgusting coward. You're gonna be held accountable for that. You will too. Y'all are ridiculous. You're ridiculous. Raise your child right. Raise your child right. Raise your child right. Don't. You have half naked people. You have half naked people out here. That's she wicked. Kick you. She I did. Saw it. She I, I saw it. She kicked me. Yeah, no, the sign is not you. Okay. The sign is my property. You're on their side. If we were to do that to y'all, we would be in handcuffs right now. But we have no desire to do that because we have the love of Christ in us. Y'all don't have love. I don't want that. Y'all don't have love. Y'all have a false love. No, the true the true rainbow is pretty. The true rainbow is pretty. No, it's seven colors. Seven colors, that's six. What's the seventh color? Indigo. Indigo's not like... Well, like, isn't that like... No, it's not. There's no way you're going to heaven. There's no way you're going to heaven unless you repent. That's the only way. Just, hey guys, just remember we're not here to judge. Yeah, we are. John 7:24, judge with righteous judgment. Jesus said that. The saints will judge the world in righteousness. Where's our stones? I don't have any stones. Understand? Don't take it literally. Oh, but you're taking it literally when I'm speaking this. Then why'd you bring it up? What was the what, what was the point of bringing that verse up? I'm just saying, don't, because a couple of times you'll make some statements around, and they came across a little judging. They are judging. We're called the judge. They're Jesus not, said. No. We but, are not I mean, the judge. So if I show you where Jesus says judge, you're just gonna run away, right? No, I've got other plans for this evening. Go ahead, tuck your tail and run away, coward. I'll show you what Jesus I said. I'll show you what Jesus said. Well, then don't run away. Let's see what Jesus said and let let him be true and us liars, right? 
Jesus God. said, Jesus said in John 7, 24, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. We're called to judge righteously. This is a righteous judgment. This, and so are yep. you saying this is not righteous? This is unrighteous. It's righteous for me why, to tell them that truth. Why is it unrighteous? Because they're living in wicked sin against God. In the Bible way? says homosexuality is an abomination to God. Because they love everybody? No, because they lust. Because okay. they lust. You're judging. Not everybody I'm lusts. I just showed you Jesus not? told me to judge. I just showed you that. I just showed you that. Judging incorrectly. Says you. And I have not right to my opinion. But Jesus also said. Justice. Jesus also said that a man not shall leave his mother and father and cling to his wife, and the two shall become one, one flesh. Not everyone is in a gay relationship. But they support. It's, they support gay relationships, right? The Bible says if you support sin, you are a sin approver. Sin approvers are just as guilty as sin. They support and love everyone and love your neighbor. And pedophiles? Do they support pedophiles? I'm not here to judge. So love is all accepting, except for when you don't accept someone. That is not, I didn't say that about you. No, I'm you not. Say that about me. You're saying that they're you're loving everybody. Me. I'm allowed to judge you, sir, and you're allowed you to judge me. Go ahead and judge. judge. It I doesn't say. It does. I was not put here to judge. So you don't ever judge, ever. I am not judging. You don't make judgments on what you're going to wear that day. You don't make judgments on when you need a haircut or when you need to gas your car up. Those are judgments. It's not even worth having a conversation. Then why did you approach me? I'm trying to. Oh, don't take your children to this wicked event. Oh, Turn to Jesus. Raise your children to fear God and not fear man. Turn from this lifestyle, my friends. Sin will lead you to hell. Turn to Jesus while you still have time. God condemned cities that gave themselves over to homosexuality. And one day, if man does not repent of their sin, God will do the same to this wicked and perverse generation. Grow up, man. Jesus Christ, he will hold every single soul accountable to their sin. Any man or woman that has sinned and not been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Psalm 5.5, God hates all workers of iniquity. You gotta read the Bible, ma'am. Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Offended. You okay with being left? Do what? I respect you. I, res I, I don't respect your uh, your opinion at all. Turn from your sins, my friends. Sin will lead you to hell. It's not worth it. A place where there'll be weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. It's not worth it. Don't do it, my friends. I want you to be saved. I don't want you to be damned. You should go home and repent. Psalm you don't love Jesus. You don't love Jesus. You're spreading hate. Love. You're spreading hate. You're spreading hate. You're spreading hate. Repent. 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 We did. I'm gonna burn in hell. You don't have to. So go ahead and light yourself on fire then. Give me some gasoline. I'm not going to give you gasoline. I don't want you to burn. Why are you drinking beer then, Christian? Why are you drinking beer then? Are you are you telling us how to preach? I'm telling you you're wrong. So are, tell us how to do it right then. That's what we're doing. That's exactly what we're doing. You're not following Jesus, so you're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. Because you're telling us how to do it when you're not doing it yourself. Hypocrite. So you're not a Christian, but you want to tell us what Jesus said. Yeah, I read That's stupid. That's called being stupid. Don't do that. 
Don't be stupid, be smart. Follow Jesus, obey Jesus. I'm a lucky guy. I don't believe in luck, I'm blessed and highly favored by my God and Savior Jesus. Amen, hallelujah. And guess what? There's nothing you can do that can take it away. I got fullness of joy, fullness of joy. And I don't need alcohol. I don't need sex to get there. I already have it. I already have it. I have fullness of joy. It's awesome. You should try it. Seriously. Repent. Love is love until you hear the gospel, then you don't love anymore. The homosexuals are not tolerant of truly born again Christians. I love you. I love no, you, you don't. You gotta stop sinning, man. Sin will lead you to hell. It's not worth it. That's the most loving thing I can tell you. You can't give something you don't have, and that's the love of God. Bible says that love does not rejoice in pride or iniquity. Love is not proud. It does not puff itself up. Turn from your sins, my friends, please. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. He's the only way. You will not have peace or joy unless you have Jesus. Turn to Jesus. It doesn't mean anything. If you have Jesus, you'll obey Jesus. Jesus said that a man shall leave his mother and father and cling to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. He didn't say that a man shall leave his mother and father and cling to his homie or his same-sex partner. The dogs will be outside the kingdom, sir. He said his wife, one man, one woman under God. Anything else is sin. It's not worth it, my friends. You see a woman right there? She had, she taken. Walk of shame? It's not walk of shame. I'm not ashamed of Jesus. You should be ashamed of your sin, though. Yeah. Your sin. You're, You're a man. Sin. You're a man. That's a man. That's not a woman. You're a man, that, sir. That's a man. You need to repent and be You're a man a that God man. made you. What are you talking about? Repent of your sin. Repent of your sin. The Lord can give you ears to hear. You do it. Why don't you do it? Why don't you do it? Oh, okay. Okay. Then what are you doing here? Oh, oh. So I guess if I volunteered a homeless shelter, I could still be here, right? Come on, man. I will preach the gospel, die and be forgotten, as long as you get the glory. Yeah, I will preach the gospel, I'll die and be forgotten, as long as you get the glory. Come on, sing it again. Well, I will preach the gospel, I'll die and be forgotten, as long as you get the glory. Yes, I will preach the gospel.